Jack and everybody gonna scream and shout. You see the man put the nine to your head. Pop, pop. You could be dead, dead. Puyo Kasha, welcome to my video. Congratulations on a wise purchase. If you was wondering where the money goes, let me explain. 12% goes on distribution. 8% goes on packaging. That fancy plastic cover don't come for free. 20% goes to Mr. Retailer. And the remaining 85% goes into this bag of skunk. Thank you very much for your contribution, Alison Redman from Ricelip in Middlesex. For most of you, this video is purely educationalist and hopefully you will learn some serious stuff about life and tin, unless you is a proper monk. But for some of you ladies out there, you is using this for another purpose. If your man is left town for a couple of days, please do not feel shy to take this off the shelf, stick it in the recorder and have a little fiddle in the downstairs department. I hope I can do for you what Britney Spears has done for me. However, if you as a boy and thinking of knocking one off to this, then think again. May I suggest you exchange this video for a Queer as Folk box set, also available from Channel 4 Video. So for the rest of you, free your mind and enjoy. First up, me met a geezer called Judge Pickles, who despite his name, ain't a DJ, but is actually a judge. West Side. Yo, yo, what's up? I'm here checking out my main man, Judge Pickles. We're here, we're talking about the law. Now, law is something that you need to get down with if you don't want to go inside the nick. And it ain't boring, it don't need to let you stop you scoring. We're here to find out how it can be fun, but also know what's going on so you don't go down. Isn't that right, Judge I'm Pickles? I'm not sure it's fun. <laughs> yeah, what is it then? I did 40 years. I found it very boring on the whole. Now, what is the Fifth Amendment? You getting me? The Fifth Amendment, isn't that's in America, that's an American thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's not a British idea, is it, the Fifth Amendment? If, when you say, I plead the Fifth Amendment... Yeah, well, that's an American system. <laughs> no, no. Why not? Well, because American law doesn't apply here. Why not? <laughs> what if it was a drink-driving? If it was a drink-driving charge? Could you plead the Fifth Amendment? We can never, in, in this country, the Fifth Amendment doesn't apply. Never? Not in court, no. When can you murder someone? Oh, well, <laughs> when you say it, that's, that's really a nonsensical question, if I may say so, because if you are entitled to kill somebody, mm. it's not murder. OK, but can you murder someone if someone, let's say, call your mum a no, slag? No, this no, your no, 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 no. <laughs> if they call your mum well, a slag, yeah, well, you ring up the police, police ain't gonna do nothing, you know, they laugh at you. Well, I don't know. It depends, I suppose. If you called my uh, mother a slag and I then uh, killed you, um, provocation can reduce murder to manslaughter. Mm. So where's the line there? If they ah. call her a slag manslaughter, if they call her a bitch, well, is no. that murder? <laughs> OK, now you're a judge. How do you know when someone's guilty? Let's say, let's have this scenario. You've got a guy there, 19-year-old, driving around in top of the range, Saab, all the lights and everything, leather seats, bitches in the front, bitches in the back, <laughs> sitting on the woofer speakers, gold tooth, UV light underneath, big drum and bass coming out. The guy never done any work in his life. Is he a rapper or is he a dealer, considering he never touched any decks or held a mic ever in his life? Are you going to put this man down? Well, I'm not going to do anything except ex accept the verdict of the jury. Yeah. What, you well, think this man <laughs> ain't a dealer? Well, you... Come on, you've got to put him down! <laughs> do you think women should be in juries? Oh, yes, of course. What about when they got the painters in? <laughs> oh. What about when it's rag week? <laughs> I'm sorry. How can they be thinking straight? Serious. Yeah, well... Serious. I'm... My woman, she doesn't know what's going on. Guilty, everyone is guilty when it's her time. 
Yeah. Everyone is guilty. I do something small. Guilty, you should well, be chopped, whatever. I don't honestly think you could start asking people intimate questions and saying, oh, you can't do it exactly. this way. Exactly. That's why you should not have women on no, the show. No, no, no. <laughs> I've never thought about this before, actually. You get wise, know what you're doing, and get legal. I, I <laughs> Big Shaq going out. My main man, Big <laughs> Selector. It was right down here when we first realized that Britain is like a lady's punani because they is both made up of many parts. They're, they're, and they're, and if you was to keep the whole thing happy, you must pay proper attention to all of them. Which is why we went to check out Wales, which we like to think of as the of Britain, to help solve their problems. Chicky. When you hear the word whales, you probably think of the fish with the biggest dick in the ocean. <laughs> but it is also the name of a country that is only 200 miles away from Britain. They is all banging on about a devolution. So I is come here to find out what it is and if I can help. West side. <laughs> What does your boys want? We want self-government for Wales. So what happen if, you know, Blair go mental or whatever and want to come and invade the Wales? What will you do? We'd sing him away. <laughs> <laughs> Check this, I is now going to a coal mine, which is a place where the Wales people used to live underground. <laughs> Millions of years ago, miners lived in here before they became human beings. No, they would never lived within the mine. They only worked within the mine. So what, people work under here? Yeah, 30 to 40 people who work in here every day. <laughs> that is a crap job. No, that's an uh, important job. So what kind of animals is there down in the mines? Is it true that there was animals there that were like dogs with a head of an ant that could fly? <laughs> I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that in China, no. Was there squirrels there that was like three meters long <laughs> that had eyes this big couldn't see? No, I haven't seen that. All I've read about that. Follow me now and I'll All just right. show you some photographs. So why is it mainly brothers who is working down there? <laughs> brothers? Aye. Why is it mainly the, the black man? That's a bit racist, isn't it? <laughs> Oh no, no, that, that's sweat and dirt, that is. So that's why has he blacked dirt. himself up and pretend to be like a brother? But he hasn't blacked himself up and he hasn't uh, pretended to be, like you say, a brother. Ali in the land of Wales, Ali in the land of Wales, boo! Now the kids at this university might all sound like divs, but that is because they're speaking in the language of Wales. I is going to go in there and learn some of this Welsh and see if I can try and prevent from getting covered in flop. <laughs> What's this? Helen, do we? What? Helen, do we? I'm Helen. What? I'm Helen. <laughs> Hello? Helen, Ali. do we? Al Ali. Do we? Ali. Do we? Say Ali. No, Ali. Yeah, but you say Ali, do we? Why do you say do an e? That means I'm, I'm Ali. Not do an e. Do we? Do we? Aye. Helen, do we? Do an e? Ali, Ali do, do an e. <laughs> you both do an e. Tend you these people. Ali do any? You could say Mr. Bean do we? <laughs> Mr. Bean do any? Yeah, Mr. Bean. He never do any. <laughs> He's stiff, man. Right, how about telling me you like different things, okay? Can Wicked, I like. We can use me this. like Punani. Me <laughs> like Punani. We can use this do we again, okay? To say I like. Chicken. So hang on. Do Doing coffee. Can you say coffee? What is that? I like. Coffee. Coffee to like. Like coffee. Yeah? So you can say Dween Hoffee. I don't like coffee. Oh, well, never mind. Tell me something you do like, yeah? So, chicken. Dween... Me like the chicken. So put that in front of it. Dween Hoffee. Do e chicken. Dween Hoffee. No. Chicken. I don't like coffee. No, no. Hoffee means to like. Yeah? Dween Hoffee. Dween Hoffee chicken. No, I don't like coffee. No, no, nothing to do with coffee. This is coffee. <laughs> yeah? Not coffee. 
Hoffy means to like, so I like Dwee and Hoffy. Dwee chicken. Dwee Hoffy. Dwee chicken. Yeah, it's hard to drink. No, Dwee... Hoffy. Dwee Coke. Dwee Hoffy Coke. Alright. Yeah, Dwee Hoffy Coke. Coke. No, Coke. Dwee Hoffy Coke. What do you like on television? Dwee... Dwee... Jerry Springer. Dwee... Dwee... I don't like... No, 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 I told you I don't like coffee. I like Jerry Springer. Dwayne Hoffy Jerry Springer. Dwayne Hoffy. So why do you make it sound like coffee? It's the, it's the Welsh word for delight. Dwayne Hoffy Jerry Springer. Dwayne Hoffy the Springer in the back of the show. <laughs> cock. Yeah, cock. Why do you call that cock? Because that's a, uh, a special letter we have in Welsh. That's different to English. Right. <laughs> Can you say that? <laughs> That's it! It's got your back in the throat. Cool. We have learned a lot about the whales today, but most important, let's increase the peace and keep it real. Take it away, boys. When you hear the words Clapham Common, Rasta and Batty Boy, you may well think of MP Ron Davies. But I have met him and he has told me that he was never there and that he lost his keys and thought maybe he could find him up a man's batty. Whatever. I went to Nata to him about the Wales thing. This going out to the Cardiff Massive. Respect. Check this everyone, I be with none other than my main man Ron Davis, in be from the government, and he is gonna talk to us about the whales. Uh -huh. We keep good, good nice, sir. respect. Good. So what is so good about whales? Because with no disrespect, me heard it's crap. Well, it's a beautiful country. Aye. We've got lovely scenery, we've got mountains and coasts and beaches. For them people out there, what they don't understand is why is you lot blowing up the Catholics? <laughs> not blowing up. What we want to do is just to have, that's, that's in Ireland. Because where me come from, from Langley, near Berkshire, <laughs> there is the Eaton Wick Massive that was a posse, and they was part of the Berkshire Massive. And then they said they wanted to be the Eaton Wick Massive. Hmm. Is that what you lot is on about? <laughs> we, we just want to be together Wicked. To take decisions for ourselves, to look after each other, right. and to respect each other. What is the language called? The language is called Welsh. Or in, no, in it's called Dutch. Camrag is Dutch. the... Dutch. Dutch. <laughs> Welsh. Welsh is the language. Welsh is the language, yeah. yeah. And can you speak of it? Of course, yes. Come on. If, what, if I met you in the morning, I would say, Borida, Shuriti. <laughs> Good morning, how are you? <laughs> that I, ain't the real thing. It is the real thing. <laughs> that ain't the real thing. And, and you would say to me, Borda, Dion, Dion, should I tell I'm very good, thank you. How are you? <laughs> that ain't the real thing. It's a very good language. It's the oldest language in Britain. <laughs> it's funny, what? The, the things that you said there. I bet you was calling my mum a slag or something. No, you just saying good morning. Anyways, we're all very polite. But when you start speaking with all that, you know, <laughs> it's not that. To, so, funny, to someone who speaks Welsh, it's a, it's a good accent. So, is you a rich country? No, we are, we're not a rich country. Maggie Thatcher closed all the coal mines. Aye, and we she was got, a bitch. She, she was, she was worse than that. Aye, and we she got, was a slug. Yeah, we got big unemployment uh, in Wales and a lot of poverty. Do you think that they should do nuclear testing? <laughs> in Wales? Yeah. But you can earn a lot of money if you say we will test nuclear bombs yeah. in North Wales. Yeah, but it's not very good for the people who live there and it's not very good for the environment. For real, but if they was getting over a couple of hundred squid a head, I bet they would no, I, don't, I don't think so, I don't think so. So was Di Princess of Wales? Yep, she was, yep. So I bet you was well upset when she was. Yeah, that's right. And uh, she was very, very much loved in Wales. So do you think it was Elizabeth that 
died so she no, could no. get whales as well. No, no, no. But you don't think it was like a woman thing that she was jealous that Dai was at the Welsh Massive and she wanted that too, so... No, I don't think so. I don't think so. It's time for people out there to start using this to stop doing this. Yeah. And then they will start feeling this. And other things too. Good. Respect. Nice. You got yourself. Great. And keep it real. Jungle is passé, aye? Now, you is never too old to learn how to handle yourself in the ghetto. That is why I run workshops in gang culture here at the Aubrey House Residential Home in Guildford every Wednesday. Now, Heather, tell me, what is the three biggest dangers on the street today? Uzi, drive, buy and crack. Respect. Now, to learn more about new education method, we went to check out my main man, Sir Rod Boyson, one-time Minister of Education. Check it. Now, the AK-47 is a manual loading semi-automatic piece of weaponry that, if used right, can fire up to 40 rounds per minute. Careful. The AK-47. I don't know anything. Don't ask me today. I'm too worried. OK, don't be worried. It is not loaded. Listen here, I has got none other than my main man, so Rhodes, boy son in the house, because we is talking about the education thing. Let's talk about the discipline. Do you think, so Rod, there is enough discipline in school? I think there's slightly less than there should be. Do you believe kids should be caned? I do. <laughs> I, I, I have you do? I do. Wicked, man. I am. You believe kids should be caned, even in school? Even in school. Do you not think, Sir Rod, if you get caned in school, you can't concentrate as well? Because a lot of people out there say that if you're getting caned. Well, I was caned in, in, in time, and I've, I've concentrated all my life. You were that. caned. Respect, man. From that, it's a, the... Respect. From that, yeah. So, I mean, it was it. I mean, it shouldn't be done evil, and it shouldn't be done badly. But ah, you've got to have good stuff. You, you, you have to have rules in life. You have to have good cane. You have to have a good cane. Do you think sex education should be taught in the school? No. Why not? I, 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 I think that is the job of the family. Do you think porn stars should teach sex education in no. the school? No. Why not? Because I, I, I do not respect uh, porn uh, stars, as, as, as you say. But they have more boning experience than anyone okay, else. Okay, but it's not the experience that, that I want for our, our country. But someone who has had a forehead or whatever will know how to cope with any situation. Well, I, the, some of these situations I wouldn't put myself in for the beginning. For real, me feeling that, Sir Rhodes, <laughs> me feeling that so strong. <laughs> Let's talk about the teaching methods. Do you not think, Sir Rod, it is time for a new teaching method? No, human nature hasn't changed since the Garden of Eden. What about rap? Do you think rap should be used in school? I don't know what, what rap is, but... Rap it... is like, you know, me checking it, me rocking it, me feeling it, me rocking it, <laughs> voicing in the house, make it feel it like a mouse. <laughs> well, it's, um, it's uh, rather nice, is that? that from there. But it's, uh, I think that's for the, the schoolyard. So, what about the math? What do you reckon about the math? Do you, rec do you rate the math or do you rock the math? The maths. The math. The math. What's the math? You know, one, two, three. Oh, yeah, that's right. Four. Yeah, that's right. Very good. But why don't they teach proper math in school? What do you mean by proper, proper math? Well, why do they teach in kilos and grams when you should really deal in ounces, quarter of ounces, eight of ounces, you know, only work is in ounces. Well, Why don't they modernise and teach in ounces? I prefer the old ones. Uh, As being a traditionalist, I would have the old things back again. Wicked. And you need to know about quarter of ounces, eighth of ounces, all that kind of thing. Well, a particularly lot of if, if, if do you're doing baking, baking or anything of that kind, I you'll have to get that. For real. For real. I, I make my own breakfast every day. I make my own breakfast. Very good. <laughs> so... I mean, whoever bought a kilo of anything, you know, apart from my mate Dave and he's down for a 14 year sketch. You know what I mean? What is that useful for, the kilo? I'm not certain that the kilo is of great one. 
<laughs> so, Rod, do you think there should be mixed schools? I think there should be a choice for parents and the pupils themselves. Do you not think, though, if you have mixed schools, all the boys will spend all their time chasing math and all the girls will spend all their time just preparing their math? <laughs> I, I think that if the school is running properly, if they're in well controlled that school, right. that, that it, it, it's, it's, it's right. But me, me got an A plus in Punani, but me failed my exams. Because <laughs> me was so into the chasing the bit of... The, uh, well, you'll have to, well that's, uh, that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I think overall, right. single set schools work better than mixed schools. But don't you think single sex girls schools, they just breed, you know, people who drink from the furry cup? Well, never having drunk from the fairy cup, I, I, uh, I, I don't know what the liquor is in it. But, but, you, uh, know, so well, you know, you know. But, but, you know, them girls that is drinking from the fairy cup, that <laughs> like to eat from the bushy plate. You know what yeah. he's getting at? Yes, I know what you're getting at. So, Rhodes, will there always be education throughout the nation stopping domination? There'll always be some In the way. station. Yeah. There'll, there'll, there'll always be some method of one generation putting it in, in the work of the, of, the, of the next generation. Wicked. You is rocking Sir Rhodes, boy son in the house. Booker, booker. Wicked. You is the man. I wish he was my teacher with them years ago and I wouldn't have turned out like this. Check this out. According to the DSS, I live in three of the flats in this block, not to mention one in that old biddy zone we was in. But not everywhere is as beautiful as the Taplow House estate. Apparently, there's this well minging place called the countryside. So, me got in my motor and checked it out. Respect. Wicked, I has come out to the countryside because it ain't only animals that live here, there's also peoples too. And they have got issues that they is worried about and they is getting all minstrel about. So me is finding out what they is. Check this. When you is in the countryside, it is important to wear the right clobber so you don't look like a prick. That is why me is wearing wellies. Your name is? Terry Farrell. He is, you know. And he is going to take us around his farm. Let's yep. check out a few of the animals. There's one out here you won't come out in the field with. All right. What the fuck is that, man? <laughs> check out that mama. And what are these things here? Sheep. They are called sheep? Yep. Man, there's a lot of shit here, man. Why don't you clean up? Have a look down here. What is going on there? Oh, come on, man. Hey, don't try any of that funny business. Ah, oh, you dirty boy! I'm gonna tell the farmer that you touch that. What do you use chickens for? They lay eggs. They lay, what do you mean they lay eggs? They lay eggs, like you would have for your breakfast. What, Ch eggs come out of chicken? Yeah. Where do they come out of? The backside. They come out of their ass. You haven't lived, have you? They wouldn't you even somewhere? eat something that came out of my Julie's Where house. did you come out of? Me came out of my mum's punani. <laughs> and not out of her batty. That is right, man. Me ain't ever eating another egg. Ali in the countryside, Ali in the countryside. Ali in the countryside, Ali in the countryside. Wicked. I is here in the countryside. I was checking out a hunt. This is where a group gather their posse, get some horses and shoot some animals. Wicked. <laughs> These are dogs, eh? These are the bitch pack. But it is disrespectful to call a, a dog a bitch. It is a, a, a terminology we use which is friendly. It is in no way disrespectful. So you're not cussing these dogs when you call them bitches? No, no. You're not saying that they is a bit loose or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and do you call your women the bitches as no, well? No, no, no. <laughs> Wicked, me think me a spied the fox, eh? <laughs> so is you the fox? No, I'm just here for a bit of fun. Oh, you was very modest about saying that you ain't the fox. <laughs> Is you the fox? No. No, sir. me don't think so. 
We have learned to respect the ways of the countryside. It is a place of peace and tranquility. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> All right. This may look like a beautiful park full of flowers and tin. But one night last year, this was the scene of one of the most bloodiest battles that ever happened in this world, innit? I was here chilling with my posse when from over there by the Starburger there was this sound of spear garage. It meant only one thing, that the East End's massive was on their way over. Anyways, their boss man Hassan Big comes up to me and he says that my mum had been sucking him off. So I give him a one inch punch like Bruce Lee and I swear I would have killed him if it was one millimetre to the left. But it ain't just stains where there's war happening. There's other places too, which is why I checked out Major General Ken Perkins, who is only the most highly decorated soldier in the British Army, innit? Check it. <laughs> Wicked. I'm here to talk about the military. I got with me my main man, Major General Ken Perkins. Now, he's seen a lot of action in Korea, in Malaysia, in World War II, so he knows his stuff and he knows where he's at. Now, the army is important, innit? <laughs> It's the mainstay of civilizations, we know it, I think, probably. So, is it difficult to get in the army? No, uh, you need to be physically fit, uh, you need to be mentally alert. Uh, so it's not just for people who are a bit thick, who don't have any... Uh, <laughs> Absolutely not. If you're a bit thick, you won't get in. What about the SOS? They is with it, no? <laughs> the SOS. They is the hardest. They are the best soldiers in the world, probably, I would say, yeah. yeah. Now, is it hard to get in? It's extremely hard, yeah. Does it help if you've already killed someone? <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. i got a mate, Dave, and he's prepared <laughs> to go in the army and he's got his own gun and he says he killed someone. I don't believe him for talking rubbish or whatever. <laughs> what about batty men? <laughs> batty men? You mean the screws loose? No, you know. Back him in. Ah, oh, you, you mean gays? Aye. Uh, well, there have, there have been gays in the army for years. I mean, if you, you know, there isn't a problem unless you make a problem. But a lot of the officers went to public school and, you know, there's a lot of gay lords there. And, you know, then they go into the army. But they're, but they're certainly not gays, are they? Public schools. They're not a breeding gown for gays. If you had a load of benders, wouldn't the other side be scared that they'd bum them? The other side? The other side? That you was fighting. War isn't like that. You, 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 you don't have a, a, a real vision of what war is, mm. I don't think. So who did you fight for in World War Two? Who did I fight for? I was, a, I was an artilleryman originally, I then... Uh, and which, which side? A British, British soldier. Did you ever think about changing side? No, <laughs> but let's say me, you know, I was always with Man United or whatever. <laughs> but when it became clear they weren't going to win the double, I went to the Arsenal. Whatever. <laughs> when it was, when you thinking that the Jer Jerry's was going to win, you didn't think maybe I'll go over to the Jerry's. I'd no one ever thought like that. No, of course not. He was a special guy. <laughs> so what is carpet bombing? Carpet bombing is when a whole formation of bombers fly together and drop their bombs all at the same time to produce a carpet of bombs on the ground. So why don't we do that on Northern Ireland? <laughs> we do it on Northern Ireland, do we? Why not? Well, they're British. But they is causing all the trouble. Well, it's only a small people, a number of people in Northern Ireland causing the trouble. Most of the people are loyal citizens. But how is you going to be sure that you get is getting everyone who's causing the trouble <laughs> unless you do the carpet? Well, then why don't you lock up everybody in this country to make sure you lock up the criminals? <laughs> Enough respect. Major General Perkins in the house. He put a lot of years in to the country. Time that you, you at home, started putting in a bit. <laughs> this is a church 
which is a place where religious people go each week to do prayers, sing hymns and get circumcised. I used to come here regular as a kid, mainly because there's a great place around the back to have a little smoke. And apparently the police can't get you because Jesus was a talker. I went to meet the Bishop of Orsham, who works for God and has even met Jah. Respect. So, what does God look like? Okay. Well, I think the best way I can say that is um, he is sort of Jesus shaped. <laughs> when, when you look so at Jesus. Got a beard. I mean, no, that's not what I mean. I'm talking about what's inside. It's not that he's got a beard, it's, it's uh, the sort of person Jesus was. Okay. Is he a man or is he a woman? Uh, well, he's neither a man nor a woman. He's is gone. he a he's like gone. lady boy? He is a beard. <laughs> So what has God ever done? No, he made the world, okay? He created. He made the world? Okay, of course. Did he? Well, that's, I can only tell you what I believe, man. I mean, I, I can't prove it to you. It's faith. So you're saying God made the world? I believe that's what I believe, yeah. yeah. And since then he's just chilled? <laughs> so what about then... The Virgin Mary, was she really a virgin? I, I believe uh, that Mary was a virgin, yeah. She found that she was pregnant. And she says, she asked the question, how can this be? I mean, I'm surprised she said, how can this be? But we know girls that also say, me find me pregnant. Me <laughs> <laughs> find me pregnant, you know, what happened? And, you know, the mother will ever say, listen, girl, you know, you've been mucking around. <laughs> Well, maybe he was drunk, maybe something happened. Okay, well... Don't lie to me. <laughs> so, do you do miracles? Well, if I have, they would always have to be in the name of the Lord. Aye. Lindsay Irwin, that's my name. I can't do miracles. God does miracles. So can you do a miracle now? <laughs> well, it depends what you mean. What do you mean? Give it, give it. I mean... A miracle. What I would not do... Can you do a miracle What I would not do is test God. You know, one of the things the Bible says is, don't test God. Aye. Don't, uh, don't say, hey, that chair could lift up in the air to test God. But can you do That's, that? No, I can't. <laughs> it would be a miracle if everybody treated each other like brothers, wouldn't it? Respect be, though that, some brothers fight. You know, I, some I know, brothers. I know they do. But that would be a better miracle than this chair getting up and moving up and down. If everyone treated each other as brothers. Now, for me... No, if this chair went up and down, that would be amazing. <laughs> I just want to say big up. Big up yourself, Bishop. Big up. <laughs> Me is here now in Learcroft Park. This path here is the dividing line between the West Ends Massive and the East Ends Massive. I would be risking my life if I trod over this line. There. Lives has been lost over who owns those swings over there. There is no easy solutions. So using my knowledge of the street, we went to check out Northern Ireland to help solve the problems between the Catholics and the Muslims. Hear me, boy! Alina North Island, Alina North Island, put it by now! Alina North Island, Alina North Island. Check this, I is with my main woman, Sue Ramsey. She be a member of the assembly of Sinn Féin. Now, Sinn Féin, what's the vibe? Uh, Sinn Féin is a 32 county party. Our main aim is uh, the reunification of Ireland. And what is the language that they speak here? They speak Gaelic here. Gaelic? Gaelic, yeah. <laughs> what is that, like a Bati language or something? But <laughs> <laughs> like, what is the real name for it? What is, Irish. What is the, it's called Irish? Irish, yes. So then when they're cussing it, they say it's like a no, gay no. man. Gaelic means Irish in Irish. Aye. Gaelic because in Irish. English, gay means a man who would sleep with another man. <laughs> And the lick is like, uh, you know, is maybe the cause of the problem that they say that, and maybe it's a stereotype or whatever, but they say the Irish is always up for the crack or whatever. Is that a problem because the crack make you violent? Me know people from me estate, they go mental and whenever there's someone around, they want to fight them, whatever. No. It's a bad drug. No, crack. Crack in Ireland means having a good time. Aye, uh, for real. <laughs> they ain't all fun. It's also bad stuff as well. There's a high, but after you finish it, there's no, a low. Crack, crack in Ireland doesn't mean drugs. Ali in Ireland, Ali in Northern Ireland, Ali in Ireland, Ali in Northern Ireland. Boom! 
Wicked eyes with none other than my main man, the Lord Mayor of Ireland, David Odorice, and we is having a cup of tea. <laughs> Hello, Alex. You're uh, very welcome to Belfast. I don't know what's going on here. Why is there all the fighting? There are people in Northern Ireland who wish to be uh, part of a united Ireland. Right, uh, for real. And then there are people living in Northern Ireland who wish to remain uh, part of the United Kingdom. And where does Wogan stand? <laughs> Who's that? Wogan. Wogan. Terry Wogan. Uh, Terry Wogan. <laughs> Terry Wogan. <laughs> what is he? I have no idea what his political stance is. But was he not in the IRA? <laughs> Terry Wogan. No. No, he was. I is here now with my main man, Sammy Wilson, in B from the DUP that mean the, the Democrat Party or something. So is you Irish? No, I'm British. So is you here on holiday? No, Northern Ireland has always been part of Britain. So why is everyone cussing the RAC? <laughs> well, I think it, it, the RUC. The, the, the Royal Ulster. The RAC people is, everyone today is saying they are AC, they've chucked stones at them well, and whatever. And it ain't their fault if they don't come, you know, in mm. time or whatever. Not, not everyone is doing that. I, mean, I think that's the first thing. The vast majority of people in Northern Ireland actually use the police um, right. for their own protection. But why is they be. using a breakdown service as police? <laughs> that, to me, sounds like the most stupid thing. No wonder uh, they're fighting here or whatever if they're, if uh, they're doing well, you that. You see, I think you've got a mistake. It's the R-U-C. Right. <laughs> Which is the biggest city in Ireland? Which is the biggest city in Ireland? Dublin, because it keeps on doubling and doubling in size. Have you got any jokes? Well, there's, there's a joke that, that's often told about um, Ian Paisley. Aye. And uh, that he is he, on crack. He, he, he was he was uh, <laughs> he was sw swimming across the. Is he on crack? No, he's not. <laughs> um, but he he was he was uh, faced with a river infested with crocodiles. Aye. And before he got in, he got this T-shirt with "I love the Pope" written on the back of Aye. it. And he swam across, and he got right away to the other side. And they asked, "How did you get so far without the crocodiles getting?" And he says, "The crocodiles would never swallow that." Is the Pope a Catholic? Ali in Ireland, Ali in Northern Ireland, Ali in Ireland, Ali in Northern Ireland. Boo! Boyakasha, check this. I is with George Patton. He be the chief executive of the Grand Orange Lodge of Ireland. Wicked. So let's talk about this march. What is this march that everyone banging on about? Yeah, that's a good question. Because uh, we don't see the fuss sometimes. Do you have music at this march? Oh, yeah. Yeah, lots of music. Oh, real. The whole world. Do you have drums? We have drums, yep. And is you like knocking out a drum and bass thing, or is it more kind of speed garage that you was knocking out? <laughs> it's, both, it's, it's all there. Uh, different drummers have their own rhythms. It's, it's an individual thing. Do you not think, though, me just. We're not giving advice, but we're saying from my own experience, sometimes it's good to back up the drums with a bit of human beatbox. Yeah. Do uh, you not think that would be good? Yes, of course it would. But, but if someone was doing the, you know... <laughs> people could chill from both sides and get into that. I hope that the people could. Ali in Ireland, Ali in Northern Ireland. Would you ever marry a Protestant girl? I have, yeah. Well, that is a gesture, no? That is a long way <laughs> to get in the peace. Yeah, but I'm a Protestant as well. Okay, all right. Yeah. So, but if you weren't married to her, would you marry a Catholic girl then? Possibly because of my faith, I wouldn't. What yeah. if she was really fit, though? <laughs> <laughs> because my religion is so important to me, uh, that's going to be the overriding factor. But what if she had her own car? <laughs> Uh, you know, sound system, whatever, she won't gonna be stealing money from you, whatever. Would you go with her then? I, I think that, you know, I am friends with Roman Catholics and I have Roman I, Catholic friends. But would you get but jiggy think, with them? Yeah, I think <laughs> whenever it comes to that, my religion is the most important thing to me. Even if they was really, yep. really fit? Yep. <laughs> yep, that's the bottom line. 
Alien Island, Alien Northern Island. Boom! Respect. Keep it real. Keep it safe. Increase the peace. Nice. Cheers. When we got back from Ireland, Minan said to me, Ali, you must have balls the size of oranges. And I said, you know, Nan, I do. But luckily, we know a lot of women who love the taste of orange juice. Aye. When the 11 o'clock show told me that I was going to interview an expert on woman, I said, listen, I don't want to stand in front of the mirror for half an hour. <laughs> but then they told me that I was meeting Professor So Liz, who is a uh, head of gender studies. Check this. Booyakasha! Check this. Today we is talking about women. I is with none other than Professor Sue Lees. She be director of the Center for Gender Research. And we is gonna be talking about ladies. Now one in two people in the country is a woman. So it's about time you've got to know about them. Women, they is important, aren't they? They indeed are. Very important. As important as men. Which is better? Man or woman? Well, equality is not about being better. But which one is better? <laughs> I don't think either is better. But one must but be a little bit better. In what respect? Like, you know, in the way that something is worse and something is better. Do you think there will ever be a female prime minister? Well, there has been one. Um, when? Margaret Thatcher. No, she wasn't prime minister. Yes. She was uh, the defence minister. No, she was prime minister. Do you think another woman will be allowed to slip through? I mean, the real question is, is whether there'll be a president of the United States who is a woman. Do you think a woman should be able to have any job? I do, yes. I think they should be able to have any job. Would you feel safe, though, if uh, you knew a woman was flying your plane? Why well, would you feel safe if a woman was flying it? Do you feel safe being driven by a woman? No. <laughs> but would you not be scared that she would start nattering or thinking about things and then forget to fly the plane or get angry and suddenly... But that's incredible prejudice, you Why? know. Because there's no evidence that women... Women are just as reliable workers as men are. <laughs> A lot of boys, we know, is trying to get their girlfriends into feminism. Do you think that is right? Yeah, I do. I think it's a good thing. Do you think all girls should try feminism at least once? <laughs> well, girls today often don't recognise how much they benefited from feminism. But do you think it is right when they try feminism when they is drunk at a party or whatever with a few mates? What does trying feminism you mean? You know, try a bit of feminism and when they is sober the next day they get back together with their boyfriends. I don't understand what you mean by get feminist. When they kiss a woman. What, being lesbian are you talking about? Sexually? Aye, for no, real. That's not fair. Feminism is not about sex, having sex relationships with I, other women. I ain't that only is not about what that. Well, it's not about it at all. <laughs> My uncle, Jamal, he says he is trisexual. Yeah. He will try anything sexual. <laughs> what does that mean? There are a lot of people, you know, who would agree that they are, that they would like having sexual relationships with men and with women. So you're saying that you think that he has done it with men? Because <laughs> he has. Right? Um, well, it would suggest that from that that he's interested in it. Don't know whether he would have done it. That's what done it means. <laughs> so you think um, my uncle Jamal is a... Uh, oh, I don't know about boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know a boy, actually. But you think my uncle Jamal like it in both pipes? <laughs> well, I think he probably uh, is making a joke. For real. So it's probably a joke. It's probably it a joke. necessarily. Because <laughs> he is a joker. Yes, and if I you think called he's him, a joker. If you call him uh, that to his face, he'd probably kill you. <laughs> we just want to say thank you, Professor Lees. Big up yourself. OK. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much. Imagine a place where there is no laws, serious math, and the government actually buy your crack. Fantasy? No. This place exists in a country called Europe. And luckily, they want us to join them. 
Weirdly enough, there is some nutters out there, like this geezer Teddy Taylor, who don't want us to. Look at him. Wicked, we is here with Teddy Taylor, MP for Southport. And he is a Tory, and he is talking to us about Europe, because it's time we know about this Europe tin that we're hearing about <laughs> every day. So who else is in Europe, first off? Well, the countries that are in Europe, for example, are countries like Spain, like Germany, like okay. France, then like Finland. Uh, and you'll find there's some countries, of course, that haven't joined. And the interesting thing is... Most of them is crap countries, though. Well, I don't know if they're crap countries. And some of them are very good countries. Is Jamaica in Europe? Jamaica's not there in the Commonwealth. And it's is that not racialist, though, that they is not Well, no, they say, basically, the only country that can join are European countries. An awful lot of the decisions are made in what's called horse trading. You support me in this one, and I'll support you in this one. What do you mean, with horses? <laughs> no, horse trading, just basically. Look, Ali, I want to get this thing. I don't want a Euro plug. So will you vote with me to stop the Euro plug, and I'll vote with you in something else? And where did the horses come in? <laughs> the horse might be saying, no Euro plug. And in exchange, they'll say, well, we want more money for this, or more money for that, or more power for this. So the horse... <laughs> the horse is at a meeting? Where... <laughs> So what about the pornos? Would that be st still be legal in Amsterdam? Well, it's, very, it's going to be very difficult indeed, quite frankly, as the borders go down to try and accept a difference in policy. So will I still be able to buy stuff with, you know, dogs and women or whatever <laughs> in Amsterdam? Is that going to be illegal now? Oh no, that's still, you'll still be able to do that. But the whole question is, is it going to have the same law for Europe? So we could start getting pornos of that quality coming <laughs> If the European Council of Ministers decide that the same rules should apply throughout Europe. Aren't there any good things about it though? Like, like I don't know, the ladies, like everyone knows we've got a lot of mingers here. And, you know, you get some Swedes, whatever, and because they is easier and less frigid than you know, the English girls. South and Sea is the place where the loveliest girls are. May I had a look around, man. I must say, it's the latest place in the world, South End. If you want to join Europe, make sure you have a B-R-I-A-N, know what you was doing before you throw it all away. Big so shout out. Long time ago. Teddy T. Well done. Respect. <laughs> Langley cool. Art like this make the world more beautiful, which is why me went to chat with Lord Inlip, because he'd be an expert on it. That man did not stop laughing. It may have had something to do with him having a little talk from some Berkshire super skunk I accidentally had on me. Wicked, I is here with Lord Inlip, he be the head of Christie's and he knows everything about art and tin. Now, art ain't just something for punters and people that is stiff. It is important <laughs> for everyone. Ain't that right, Lord Absolutely Inlip? Absolutely right, yeah. Absolutely. So is art more about drawing or is it more about colouring in? <laughs> well, the old-fashioned idea was that you start with drawing. I think it's still not a bad way to start. All right. Who is the best <laughs> artist in the world ever? I thought about that a great deal. All right. And I haven't made up my mind yet. Have you heard of Tony Art? <laughs> I heard of Tony Art. Tony Hart. Oh, him. Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you think he is the best artist because he can do anything in any style? He can do anything in any style, but he's not necessarily the best artist. Have you heard of Rolf Harris? Well, I was just going to say... He's really <laughs> do you think he is the best artist ever? I think ever? he's incredibly clever. I think he's brilliant. He's amazing because you don't know what he is until at the end. He's, <laughs> I, he's a genius. He's fantastic. Who was the best impressionist? I would always say that Manet was the best. Who could he do? <laughs> he could do anything. Could he do walking? Because that is the most difficult. One. Could he do walking? Walking. And which impressions could he do? Oh, but don't don't um, don't get confused between right. impressions and impressionism. So, what is the Turner Prize? The Turner Prize is perfectly valid. It draws attention to contemporary things. Who won it this year? It was Trisafili. 
He paints with elephant dung. What? <laughs> you what? You asked me and I told you, he paints with elephant oh, dung. Rubbish. I used to love it, rubbish, but that's what he uses. Elephant dung like shite. Ele <laughs> and that is art. Me once did that with some dog stuff and we got a police caution. <laughs> me put it on my enemies. Me well, put, smell me this and you'll know what you is. I got police caution for that. This guy <laughs> <laughs> to be an artist, do you have to be a bit mental? I think so, don't you? Because I hope so. My teacher told me that Van Gogh chopped his knob off. <laughs> <laughs> he chopped his knob off. He chopped his ear off. <laughs> what? He chopped his ear off. <laughs> he chopped his ear off. Yes. What did he do that for? <laughs> he got it. <laughs> so thank you very much, Lord Inlip. You have shown that art is fun and it is time that we will start knowing a bit about it and not just going, hey, that's for Batty Boys, but going out there, <laughs> realising it, yeah, and making it real. Edith, this is the centre of culture in Stans, where you can see all the best films. For example, this is where me first saw Police Academy 6, Mission to Moscow. But there is more out there than just the ABC. So check out my guide to culture. Here it is. Every day, zillions of squid is being spent on culture for posh people, many of whom is professional gay lords. I'm talking about opera, ballet, and all the other shit you see on Channel 4. Is this money being wasted? Should it be spent on the hospitals or making sure that there is good quality crack on the streets? I just come to find out. Rock it! Ali in the culture, Ali in the culture, but if I know. Ali in the art gallery, Ali in the art gallery. Big up yourself, Ali. Ernst Nagel, good to meet you. Respect. Okay, we'll, all right, well, let's get them out of the way. Sorry, can you get out of the way? Sorry, can you get out of the way? All right, we'll just... Here with we the telly. Yeah, but yeah. 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 Uh, sorry, sorry, we didn't. Sorry. Yes, can you get out of the way? Sorry, I just, we just, we, sorry. Who be this cheeky little lady? So this is by Paul Gauguin, so the, the friend of Van Gogh, who's good. That's no? nice. It's good. She, she look as if she has just been. I'm not sure. She doesn't look that. Uh, that happy, I don't think. Uh, maybe she's think? been taken up the wrong end or something. <laughs> what is that? Mean? That's part of the door and it. Oh, come off it. That's meant to be a yeah. door. It's meant to be flat, you see. That's why it's, it's so new, because it isn't, it isn't meant rubbish. to have three dimensions. The door is rubbish. I mean, the face is quite good, but that is... It's just a suggestion of right. a door. Yeah. But why couldn't you be asked to do the whole door? Look at me, now I'm going to meet Jerry Robinson, he be the head of Granada and also the head of the Arts Council. Why is the art so... Excuse me, French, but crap. <laughs> I, think, I think art is... there's a huge variety of excellent art in, in England. Do you just give money to things that ponces go and see? No, I think you spread the money pretty evenly across the whole, uh, across the whole piece. Do you give money to lesers to teach kids how to do it? To, <laughs> to teach kids how to... To lesbians? Aye. No, well, not that I'm aware of. Because we saw this thing on Channel 4, this guy drink like a pint of paint or whatever, and then, excuse me, French, he, he shit it out his exit. <laughs> that, that can't cost that much. Was that the arts council that did that? I don't know. Ali in your brows, Ali in your brows, what do I know? Me meet some ponds, me meet some ponds. Look at this, this is the Royal Opera House. It looked rubbish, don't it? That's why they're spending over 25 billion squid to make it look more like the John Nike Leisure Centre in Bracknell. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of skill do you need to be an opera singer? Do you have to be able to sing? Yes, that's the primary requirement. Is that not racialist? <laughs> because it's unfair on people who can't sing. <laughs> so how many singers do you get up there? It depends on the individual production. With full respect, why is so many of them Older. so terribly fat? <laughs> They're not all Is fat. it because you is trying to stop discrimination so you let in a lot of the fatties? <laughs> so what is the acoustic like? It's brilliant. Wicked. 
you're sitting up there, you can hear as well as if you're sitting down there. So Try it. Hear me now. Ride the punani. Ride the punani. Nice. Nice. Good acoustic. So, if you want to check out some culture, you can either spend 50 squid on a ticket for a night at the opera, or we can get you a bag of skunk this big. <laughs> the choice is yours. You got me mobile number, I. What's that? Now, apparently, it looked like this video is going to get a PG rating, which would mean me losing most of my respect in the hood. So, to get here in 18, I'm going to have to use a word which I has never used before out of respect for me bitches, and which I swear I will never use again. Cunt. I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. If you have to blame anyone for me using that, blame James Furman, because he is the geezer that gave this video its classification, and him is the um, head of the board of films things. So I went to uh, check him out the other day. Look at this. Can you stop that banging, you cunt? I am on the telly. Wicked, I is here with none other than my main man, James Furman. He is the geezer that signed his name under the films. Now, why do we have censorship? Well, strangely enough, most people in this country think there should be some kind of regulation of the media. I. You must have seen some real dodgy things in your time, <laughs> right? Yeah, a few dodgy things, yes. Must be the best job in the world, though. Yeah. Just watching porn all day. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you think you'd enjoy it, but you, you don't. But you've seen 25 years of it. Yeah. I mean, nobody can, you know, well, keep it hard for that long. Yeah. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the test I would apply. Can you not say that a lot of porn is educational? No, sex education is educational. No, but a lot I mean, of me learn a lot of me stuff from, you know, backdoor machines or whatever. You know, a lot of me tricks came out of that. You learn how to be with a lady, how to romance a lady. Well, I think we tried it. There, there's now some very good sex education on video. It is important for kids to know what's going on down there yeah. so they don't make a mistake yeah, and go up the wrong end. I, I, I agree totally. <laughs> what films have been banned? Very few films that you've heard of have been banned. So why did they ban Chocolate Orange? <laughs> Chocolate orange. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, well, nobody banned that except Stanley Kubrick who made it. Do you not think that the category 18 is too vague? Should you not have a category that guarantees you muff? <laughs> you do have consumer advice now. If you buy a video, you'll see on it exactly what it contains. So why do they not have that for the films as they well? Have it, this they, as swearing. They have it. This they will have it definitely now. have They have it now in films as well, but it's optional. What swear words make an 18? Well, 18, it's the sexual expletives. Uh, um, but So uh, is flange an 18 or 15? <laughs> I don't know what flange means. So that, well, that is a word for the punani. So <laughs> I don't know what that punani means. The, well, that is what you're I'm saying. Okay, you're coming so up with a lot of words I've never heard before. So there's a whole load of terms that mean the same thing as, you know, yeah. what we're saying, the twat or whatever, <laughs> and they can slip in to a PG. I if suppose you they don't can, know. If, we don't, if we don't understand the word. So do you not need through? somebody who's more street, who knows the terms on the street, to so know, oh, wait a minute, they said minge, me know that they spoke about the pity. Yeah. So what about the word vagina? Does that make it an 18? No, no. But that is the most dirty word. Dirty, it's a part that of is, anatomy. No, but I make it sound horrible. Yeah, I don't think most people would think that. For real, so what, that could get into a 15 film? Yeah, it could get into a 12 film. But that, so they can hear the word, the vagina. Well, it depends the vagina. How, how, how it's said, but... I think you could say We want to uh, check out your vagina or whatever. <laughs> you can you say that? Well, if they call them the C word, which is the same thing. Aye, right, for real. But the C word is better than the V word. No, I don't think so. The C oh, word is much no. nicer. If you call a girl, say you've got a nice C, you know, that's much nicer than saying you've got a nice V. <laughs> well, you, you may think so. I think most women find the C word very, very uh, objectionable. Yeah, only women who is a bit, you know, up their own <laughs> seat. Thank you very much, yeah, Mr. Fair, big up yourself. Do you want to big up anyone out there? 
any directors give a shout out or something mm -hmm. like that? No, just keep up the good work. Okay, wicked. Thanks a lot. Easy now. This next one is with member of the upper classes, Jacob Rees Mogg, who people say sound like he has plums in his mouth. I tell you, it don't sound like me Julie when she has me plums in her mouth, alright? Thank you. Check it out. Mind that one. Wicked! I is here with Lord Rees Mogg and we is talking about class. Lord Mogg is going to tell us how we all can be upper class, can't we? It's been very kind of you to promote me to the uh, nobility, but of course I'm, I'm not. My, my father is, is Lord Rees Mogg and I'm just a commoner like everybody else. So what is class? What is class? Class is how other people uh, perceive individuals to be. Which class is Packies in? <laughs> Packies. By which? Which class? Is they in middle class, upper class? <laughs> You're saying Pakistanis living in, in, in England. Um, they're not in a class um, by nature of where they've come from. <laughs> what do you think makes a girl upper class? Well, exactly the same thing that makes a man upper class. But is it things it's like she spits into a hanky? <laughs> um, I don't think spitting into one's handkerchief is widely regarded as a symbol of membership of the upper class. What if uh, someone is so rich they have a swimming pool? <laughs> Would they be in the upper class? Um, no, no, I think this is a bizarre definition of, right. of, of class. What if they had a swimming pool made of gold but filled with champagne and not the cheap stuff? <laughs> Then, would they be in the what upper if, class? What if, like Cleopatra, they bathed in ass's milk? Um, in what? Ass's milk. <laughs> um, ass milk? Butty milk? <laughs> ass's. From your... No, no, no. Uh, donkeys. Ah, all right. So what if I knobbed the door of a lord? Um, um, yes. What have you did? If she got... A bun in the oven, what class would the little nipper be? Um, it would so much depend on the circumstances, depend on the girl in question and so on and so forth. So what if you got busy with my sister? <laughs> you would it she have, ain't the cleanest girl out I there. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting my sister. I, well, it can be arranged, she'll be keen. I, I, I was just speculating on, on my ha ha having a relationship with somebody I've never met and that Aye. leading to a child being born and then as to what class it might be is so uh, far-fetched um, as, as to be ridiculous. I have no idea uh, What, you think this. you was too good for my sister? I certainly not. <laughs> like, you is. No, no. I, no, you is, though. She's rank. She's nothing. I'm not really No, um, believe me. Um, Even my mum cuss her, tell her she's a slut. <laughs> Would I be upper class if I got a top hat and wore it? Um, well, would you like to try? I have a top hat, I can lend it to you for the next few minutes of this interview if you'd like. So am I upper class now? Absolutely, you're a dead ringer for Lord Snooty. Thank you, Jacob Rees Mogg. You have shown that class is interesting and we should know about it but not get stuck in it if we is going to get ahead. Wicked. Thank you. Keep it real, Jacob. Thank you. I and I. Bye. And come and visit us at the yeah. Stains Massive. It's a pleasure. <laughs> this is a hospital, innit? I has been here twice. Once when me was born. And then after a drive-by, when we had both me tonsils removed. I is fine now, thank you. But I couldn't do human beatbox for a whole year. So this is my guide to the alternative health surface. Respect. Booyakasha. <laughs> there is many diseases that people suffer from in Britain. Flu, tuberculosis, itchy balls. <laughs> but how is they gonna get better? Sure, spliff can cure most diseases like leukemia and measles, but it can't cure everything. That is why I is coming to check out the health service and alternative health in it. Ali in the house of this, Ali in the house of this, go! Ali in the house of this, Ali in the house of this, what am I now? Recently me been spunking off a bit too soon, so me has come to a Reiki healer, see if she can sort out me knob. 
what you need to do now, helping me uh, problem. I've already done whatever I needed to do. Would it give me a few more minutes? <laughs> Probably, but that's also up to you. If me knock one off before, would it also help? <laughs> you feel a little bit like being bashed. And there is energy around my body. There's a bit in my feet. There's a bit on my knees. And if you don't mind me saying, there's a bit around my exit hole. <laughs> you feel a bit of wind now, is that right? Yeah, very often when I give Reiki to people, you know. They let one rip. Yeah, I think it's, it's just energy moving. So when we duly complain, I should just say it's the energy moving. So just feel this. Ooh, is, hey, hello, watch it. <laughs> I've been told that I has healing hands. That's wonderful. Because I can make some girls have one that has never, you know, had one before. Well, you're a lucky man, aren't you? <laughs> Touch is the most healing thing in For the world. Real. But is it not technique more than... I don't know mm, whether when they say you... that, whether it's just because, you know, I know through it's tricks, whatever. It's your energy, isn't it? Or is it because it's I give in the vibe yeah, to the banana? Yeah, it's exactly that. Alini of service, Alini of service, bo! Alini of service, Alini of service. What about now? We're now going to check out a bit of Western medicine. Luckily, we speak a little bit of Chinese. With you. What's so good about the, the Chinaman medicine? Zhongyi, what's the good so can you check me? Can you check me? Okay. You need to say the tongue. My tongue's a bit dirty because I had a little to do with Majuli this morning, but we want to check it. What's who poo? Is that real poo? So what is call. it? You just go around collect some poo, yeah. and you stick it in here and you sell it. Do you think that's right? This one is good for skin. Is that harsh? Is that like? Can you smoke this? No, of course not. Yeah. Okay, should we go and get a bit of the needle? Should we yeah. go and stick some needle? Okay. okay. Cool. Is it true that you can kill someone just by pressing there? You can kill them. You can kill them if someone really annoying you. He said, is this blood and blood and blood and blood? Are you sure about this? Oh, fucking hell. Do you know what you're doing? Yeah. Of course, what do you think? Of course. Is that meant to be getting hard? Getting? Getting hard. I'm hurt. Aye. No, it's not. So, if you is feeling dodgy, you can either go to the health service or we can sort you out with an herbal remedy. Alright? <laughs> As you can see, I ain't just a DJ. I can also swim. This is me 50 meters. This is me Kellogg's Water Skills 1. And this me got for rescuing a rubber brick from the bottom of the pool in me pyjamas. Yes, they were ill figure. The only reason I dived down there was my mate Dave told me it was a massive block of ash. When we got out, we was well pissed off, but I smoked it anyway. Now, if I drop this spliff on the floor, which I won't, because A, it will get soggy, and B, I may get a verruca in my mouth, it will fall downwards toward the ground because of something that lives in the air called science. To find out more about this, I went to check out the original Nutty Professor, Heinz Wolf. Check it. Check this. Today we're talking about science. We got none other than my main man, Professor Heinz Wolf, in Brunei University. <laughs> Checking out. Brunel. Brunei is a place in, in Southeast Asia. Okay. <laughs> Brunel University. We're talking about science. Now, science is important, isn't it, Professor? Yes, it's very important. What is the smallest thing in the universe? The smallest thing in the universe are, I should think, some of the elementary particles which make up an atom. How small is they? Well, how small? I mean, how, you mean in, in, in sort of... Uh, yeah, in uh, centimetres. 
um, <laughs> date. Ten thousand millionths of a millimeter. Is it smaller than a sand? <laughs> smaller. Um, is it go- smaller than a salt? Yes, much smaller. Sand is smaller than a salt. No, not necessarily. I mean, you can get sand grains. But salt thing. is the smallest thing no, known no. to man. <laughs> Your hair. If you flour. Any, if you had any. Um, um, flour is... Flour is smaller, is the smallest thing. No. I've got muddled up. <laughs> it's much, much tinier than, 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 than sand. Now, what about medicine? How is science involved in the medicine? Um... Medicine is increasingly based on scientific discoveries. What about knob enlargements? <laughs> so, if I understand you correctly, and I have to sort of do a mental bit of translation about the rather crude language which you employ... Um, uh, do they work? I don't know. It's not, a, it's not a subject which I have ever worked, been interested in, or required. Right, I would never need one, but if you needed one, would that you do it? No. I can ima- well imagine, being a sympathetic sort of guy, that if it, if it uh, bears down heavily on somebody's mind, that he believes themselves to be insufficient in that department... Not me. Yeah, all right, all right, then that's both. Um, then, um, um, I can say that they may well want it. What does infinity mean? Infinity means that if you... Um, Travelling by any means, whether it's Concord or on a sitting on a beam of light, you'd never come to the end. Is it a number? No. <laughs> Is it more or less than a million, 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 million? More. Because you can always add one on to the end. OK, I'll add a million on the end. <laughs> million, 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 there is million, no, million, there is million, no million, 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 because by definition... Even if I carry on saying that all day, <laughs> what happens if I use zillion? still have no, no idea. Because Killian? <laughs> no idea. Because the there prin- isn't anything bigger than a killian. No, the, the, the principle is that whatever number you try to think of, however big it is, I can always come along and say, I've got a number which is one bigger. And that number is infinity. No. Return of the Mac. This next one is with James Whittaker about the royalty. He's a very nice man and gave me a cup of tea. Check it. Terrible shame about Diana. Wicked eyes here with none other than James Whittaker. He is a close friend of all the royals. He is the expert in the country about the royal family and about the monarchy. So he is going to hear and tell us why it's all so important. Do you think there is too much press attention on the royals? Sometimes, yes, I do think so. I think that uh, the pressure on Diana in the last few months, Uh, actually the last few years of her life, was too much. Do you think it was Saddam Hussein had something to do with her death? (laughs) I, I I don't think anybody. I think the only person who had anything to do with the death was the driver, Henri Paul, who was drunk. But me heard that the Queen wanted to make sure that Saddam was cool in Iraq because they had oil in uh, Iran and they wanted to make sure that there was planes there. Do you not think that is why she died? I don't think the death had anything to do with Iraq or Iran or Saddam Hussein or uh, anybody at all. Why was she not been that Pakistani? <laughs> Well, he wasn't a Pakistani for start, he's an Egyptian. Aye. She fell in love and lust Aye. with him and she had a summer romance. Will Carmela ever be queen? Carmela? Aye, Carmela. I think she will. Do you think that a lot of the objection to Carmela is because she is so minging? So what? So minging because she what is so minging rank. Mean? Uh, she saw a face is very ugly. <laughs> Is that, word. No, that's Ali, a cool word. No, we, we don't want to say that. Not, not ugly. No, we didn't want to say that. She's, she's not, rank. She's rank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most women in this country would Aye, have a hell it's of a, a bit job. Dodgy. Well, no, yeah, being compared to rough. Diana, Aye, she who was, was a very do you agree? She was good tasty. looking woman. No, she was very fit. tasty. So you put anybody up against Diana and it's a wee bit of a problem. She's also a very fit woman. She rides uh, well. She ain't fit, man. No, this is a woman who understands Prince Charles well. She satisfies But she looks like Rod Hull. (laughs) She does, man. 
<laughs> what do you think I about th Fergie? I think she's a decent person. Did they not find pictures of her sucking someone's knob or something? <laughs> um, no, they didn't find pictures of that. In fact, I was present at this. You're talking about sucking somebody's toe or having her toes sucked. Oh, but they used oh, the word Johnny tall. Oh, Johnny Bryan. They used the, the word tall. <laughs> no, no, I was watched this. No, no, right. Naughty. How do you know if someone is a real king? Well, I mean, you know from their position and what they do and how they behave. So what about King Dong? Is he a real king? <laughs> I don't know who King Dong is, so I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't comment on that. Thank you very much, James Thank Whittaker. You, right. And it is time that you at home start knowing about the monarchy, start knowing about the Queen, because she is in control of the country. Check it out. Big up yourself, Mr. Whittaker. Thank you. Forget Paris or Milan. I find you can get the best designer clothes from the Elmsy Shopping Centre of Stan's High Street. There has got Alan Croft shoes, Etam, and even Rambolos. As if I needed to know anything else about fashion, I went to visit Thomas Starzewski. Him be a designer like Tommy Ilfinger, except much less good. Check this. Boyaka! Today we is talking about fashion because it ain't only on the streets, it is also in the shops. And I is here with none other than my main man Thomas Starzewski that be a main fashion designer. Now fashion, it well important, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's important. <laughs> we, we all like clothes, we all want to look good. For real. We're respecting what you is wearing now, your threads, your style in it, your rocking. What is that made out of? Can uh, I have a little... Hair. More hair? Yeah. More hair from the, from the muff? The no hair is a, is a type of uh, wool that is woven. Do you put your label all over the front? No. Do you put it just subtle down the I side? I only put it inside. I think it's vulgar. To Where do you label. put it? Inside. Why don't you put it on the front? Because I think it's vulgar. But if you put it on the outside, then they, you were selling the coast and you was also advertising the clothes you is not been two ladies with one Johnny. It's not, it's not what I'm about. Will you make clothes for any woman though? If she likes my style, if she likes my look, uh, uh, I'm very happy to make clothes. I mean, I, uh, I don't have a problem with that. What, even if there is mingers, would you still make clothes for them? The what? Mingers, if they have, you know, nice personality. <laughs> you know, nice personality, you know, face like a Rottweiler's ass. I don't have that discrimination, I'd find that very offensive. But if someone well minging came in here and say, you know, design me, film and want to look nice. I'd have to think, uh, to me, if I can't fulfill that woman's fantasy of making her look better, I shouldn't be a designer. But they'll bring a shame on your clothes if they is well It's my right. challenge to make her look good. So do you say that this is a big challenge because... <laughs> You've got a face that really yeah, needs to be covered. Not at all. I wouldn't even... I, I think that's appalling to have to... If I, I'd be appalled if I think like that. I think that's quite appalling. Do you not sometimes say, though, there's nothing I can do for you? I cannot change nature. <laughs> I cannot polish a turd. Nature is, nature is irrelevant. What about Versace? Do you rate him? I think that Versace... I think that um, Gucci is the Versace of today. Ah. Uh, was you happy when he got... No, because I think it's a tragedy for anyone to be murdered. Aye, but there was less competition. It has nothing to do with competition. I think that it's a great tragedy. Me I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. Me heard it was Calvin Klein that did it. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> I mean, I'd like to. So, what do you think about the Wonder Bra? Changed a lot of women's lives. Do you think it should be banned? Whatever for? Because you think you is getting something, and then you don't get it. <laughs> you're stupid enough to think you're gonna get it. It's your fault. The other week, though, me was in this club, and me saw this girl, and she, you know, weren't, she had a um, bad face, whatever, but she had, she had these serious Babylons, man, and me was grinding, and me was doing the bogle, man, and me took her home, me unleashed them, and, they disappear. They're gone. They're one on the floor, one behind the back. That ain't fair. She's a good act. You've got to give it to her. 
Well, me couldn't you gotta, give, you me, gotta give it to her that she pulled you. Me did give it to her, but me didn't feel good about giving it to her. You know what I mean? All right? Check it out. Buy your Stajewski. Start wearing the Stajewski. Start keeping it real and styling it. Big up yourself. Thank you. Nice. Buyaka, buyaka. Jungle is passé. This show is all about learning and thing. And we think this is where we went to school. At the Matthew School. I still have to keep my distance because there's a few detentions left unserved that they're trying to gum me down for. But education don't never stop. Which is why we checked out my main man, MP Tony Ben, to ask him about politics and thing. Man, that guy likes a fight. Check this out! Wicked, I is here with none other than Tony Ben. He been in the political game for many, many years, so nobody knows it like he does. And he is going to explain what socialism is and what all the left stuff is going on. <laughs> what is socialism, Tony? Socialism is about organisation, it's about democracy. So why do they call it the welfare state? Is it because it's welfare? <laughs> the welfare state means that you've got a national insurance. But unemployment benefit is wicked because you get money for doing nothing. Is that what socialism is? Why are you doing nothing if you've been sacked? Because you're chilling. Well, well, this idea that if you're unemployed, you're lazy is absolute rubbish. We ain't saying that it's because you're lazy. We're saying you, you want to chill, whatever, you know. What do you mean you want to chill? You want to relax. You don't want to have to get up every morning well, at like seven well, in the morning. Well, you the miners decided to close the pits because they wanted to be lazy? So do you think young mothers should get welfare? Well, of course. But does the welfare not just encourage young girls to go out and get jiggy with Mr. Biggie? Yeah, I keep saying that. If you think girls get pregnant because they think they'll get benefit, I think you're living in a funny world. For real, for real. They, there's girls in their state or whatever, they're 16, 17, they already got one kid, and they well, see something have, nice yeah. in the shops, they think, do, is me going to go and get a job, or is me going to go and get welfare, then me can sit on my body and watch Vanessa or whatever. No, come on, you're no, not no, living no. in the real world, my friend. You're living in a world where everybody's just so bloody greedy right. that there's no hope of building a better society, and that's why we're in a mess. For real. <laughs> is calling a strike not a bit like calling a sickie? Like you had like a really banging weekend or whatever, and you was well knackered or whatever, you ring up and you just what say, you go on strike? you're going to have a strike. Income. I mean, nobody wants to go on strike. After all, yeah, if but if you was knackered or whatever, you had a really full on oh, weekend. Blimey. If you think it's like a hangover. You have a strike. I mean, the miners won strike for a year. They had no wages for a year. The women had to struggle. But then they must have been well lazy if they did a whole year. <laughs> La look, they wanted work and the government stopped them from having the right Aye. to work. So they gave up their income to fight for their jobs and their children's jobs. But everyone going on about the right to work, what about the right not to work? <laughs> Well, that's if, you, uh, if you don't want to work, then... Uh, uh, for real. Well, I mean, that's just not true of most people, does it? Most people really want to work. You want to work, you wouldn't be no, here me don't. No, me want to work when we want to work, but most of the time we want to chill, we want to hang with me bitches, whatever. <laughs> just you just want to work. You women with a great deal of disrespect. You call them a bitch as if you were that a dog. Ain't, no, that ain't a term of disrespect. Well, it is a term of disrespect. Just like animals, you're, told, you're calling no. them animals. I think this really does come down in the end, not to an argument about politics, right. but an argument between you, you've got no time for people you think they're lazy, greedy, don't want to work, you call women bitches, and then you're asking me about a society that's happy. Well, I tell you, a society like that, somebody shoot you one day because you treat them like an animal. So, why is it everyone is banging on about the right to vote? because we took us hundreds of years to get the right to vote and we wouldn't have had the welfare state, we wouldn't have had full employment, wouldn't have had anything that uh, matters if we hadn't had the right to vote. But what's so good about it? I mean, I went once and it was rubbish. How was you meant to choose who you vote for when you ain't never heard any of the names? You well, just name. vote for the one with the most stupid name. It's Dinky Pinky Dinky or whatever. Well, if you think people do that, you see, you haven't got much confidence in people. But what we're saying, Mr. Ben, is why don't they get people who people has heard of? Why don't they get like Frank Bruno standing or Van Eaton standing? <laughs> the good thing about the celebrity means that you know what they is like. Otherwise, you get an MP yeah, and I mean, then you find after a year that they is like, you know, sleeping well, with horses or whatever. <laughs> so we just want to say thank you, Tony Ben. 
No, it's been fun. I enjoyed it very much. Maximum <laughs> respect going out to my main man, Tony <laughs> Bear. Hi. Nice to see Keep you. it real. Respect to the Ben. The environment has always been well important to me, innit? it? In fact, it was leaning against these very recycle bins that me first managed to bone me Julie. So that is why I decided to do me bit to help out the tree protesters at Crystal Palace, West Side. Everybody is talking about the environment thing. What is they banging on about? I don't know. That is why it's come down to the tree protesting site to solve the problem of the environment and maybe to mash up some police. <laughs> Ali's environment, Ali's environment, Ali's environment. Wicked, we're here at the HQ of the tree people. We're gonna go in, help them out. For them people out there, what is they actually doing? They, they why, why is they here? Because there's so little space, from what I can gather, there's right. so little space left in London, and they want to put a multi-story cinema complex and a rooftop oh, car park for 1,000 cars. But is it gonna be one of them new cinemas with all the air condition and the Dolby surround? <laughs> Well, I don't know, it would be a modern structure of some sort, but do we... The day is wicked, no? Should they not build this one and knock down the crap ones and then build trees there? Me meet the tree, me meet the tree. Me meet the police, me meet the police. <laughs> We're now going to meet the main copper, the guy who's sorting it all out. If it comes to a ruck, who do you think is going to win? <laughs> it isn't going to come to a ruck. But if it does? No, it's not going to come to a ruck. This is being dealt with as peacefully as possible. Is it possible for us to get in? Not at this stage, because it's still dangerous. Is it because I was black? Not at all. Do you not think it's time for them protesters to start looking after themselves and protecting themselves properly? The virus doesn't solve anything, does it? No. Well, I don't know what it does. It does, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah but it mainly does. Not really. Come on. You can't conquer nothing with violence, can you? Well, you can. In what? In what situation? Well, in a violent one. Are you one of the fairy folks? Who are the pixie people? Are you one of the fairy folks? Who are the pixie people? Are you one of the fairies? Do you like this planet? Do you want to see it go up in smoke? No! Me save the tree. Me save the tree. Me name Ali. All right. Me has heard both sides of the argument. Me don't understand either of them. But me is well up for a rock anyway. You can take our trees! You can take our trees, but you can't take our freedom! You can take our trees, but you can't take our freedom! Is it because I was black? Thank you for watching my vid. I hope you has learned something. For those of you out there though that is thinking of bootlegging this vid and selling it down the market for 99 pence, then unlucky because I has already thought of that and is doing it myself. So you can find me every Sunday afternoon at the car boot sale between the junction of Ashford Gardens and Learcroft Road. I hope to see you there. Peace out and respect. Let it rip, boys.